broadcast so everyone can jump in. We're going to stop that live stream. I'm going to go live on Facebook. Okay, we'll get started shortly here, folks. We're going to go live on Facebook, and then we will go ahead and initiate the recording and get fired up. We've got Jeff Worley. Jeff, you there? Hey, I'm here, Adam. Okay. All right. Give me a second here. Okay, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in to tonight's webinar. Uh, we've got Jeff Worley with us today. Um, How you doing, guys? There we go. Jeff is coming to us from Macomb, Illinois, or Colchester, I guess, right? Well, I'm in Macomb, but Colchester, yeah, we have two plants. You know, one of our facilities is in Macomb, and one is in Colchester, so. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Um, Jeff is obviously with Yetter Manufacturing. I brought Jeff in tonight to bring in his expertise on the Yetter parts of the strip till and help out. Jeff has been obviously a veteran in not only the Yetter Manufacturing uh, world, but of course strip till and, and all things uh, planter, farming, attachments in general. <laughs> how, how long have you been doing it, Jeff? Uh, this February will be 30 years. Nice. Very nice. So I, yeah, we've seen the the beginnings of strip till start, and uh, you know, for over well over twenty years, we've been in that market and working with growers, you know, nationwide in Canada. Yeah, um, you know, improve their strip till scenario for sure. Correct. Strip till has evolved a lot over just the few years that I've been involved in it, and what we want to talk about tonight is the different faces strip till has there's so many different versions of it we're going to show you those versions we want people to uh, not only get new ideas from this webinar we want them to know where to go with uh, more questions whether it's for jeff at yet or myself at fennig equipment and we just want to get people's minds going on on different things that I, that jeff and i are seeing out in the field of our customers doing uh, we want to bring all those things to one place here in this webinar for everyone to see it and, and move forward with. You know, I think it's, you know, for everybody listening and it's been a 2019, we all know <laughs> what it's been and we're still harvesting and we still get yep. drop out. So, yep. but in the same token, we've got to look ahead because we know, I mean, Hey, spring's going to come and we're going to need to put seed in the ground again. Yeah. And, and that's what I see. I mean, definitely with the strip till, it's very efficient and, and just uh, return on investment is very good of making these strips and then planting in that same March. Correct. Yep, there's, there's back studies out there showing uh, benefits of strip tillage. Uh, and we're gonna dig into that here kind of in the next slide. Um, you know, why do guys strip till? What, what even is strip till? and why does it exist? It's basically the perfect blend between no-till and conventional. Um, you can, if you've got highly erodible ground, you can potentially go in and ban fertilizer in a strip and then plant on top of that. Or if you like the advantages of going down there and, and, and mixing that soil six to eight inches deep, but you don't wanna have the erosion issues or you wanna keep cover crops growing, strip-till fits that um, 
and and it also creates some pretty awesome seed beds in the spring that are already there waiting for you you don't have to go do those strips uh or, or create a seed bed you're basically creating it in the fall correct jeff that's <clears throat> that's exactly right i mean where we see where kind of strip till has started obviously it was guys with corn on corn you know you got 250 bushel residue out there how can we no-till corn back into that residue efficiently and Yes, we can put planter attachments and, and a lot of guys, you know, do, but, you know, for corn on corn or going into wheat straw or anything that's really difficult, you know, to get down to get a good uh, seed to soil contact with our seed, that strip really gives us a little more of a boost, you know, that warm up and everything of that nature. So. Correct. Yep. And, you know, here in Ohio, where I'm located, we got a lot of guys north of us up in Van Wert County doing strip till. I've got a lot of guys in Indiana playing with strip till. And uh, like I talked about different faces strip till, whereas here at Fennec Equipment, one of the big trends we've seen is kind of the dry fertilizer banding side of, of strip till with that Yetter Magnum or, or that Nutrient Pro <laughs> 4000. They make great fertilizer banders. Right. I, I think, I mean, as far as placing the nutrients, but really, you know, like, like with our HR plus, you know, Maverick unit, I mean, we're, we're paying attention to all the details as far as clean seed bed, you know, that mound there and running the knife down there, you know, like you said, anywhere from four to six, seven inches, depending on how deep a guy wants to place fertilizer or do a little tillage down low anyway. Deep. Correct. Yep. Um, we'll go through all this stuff in detail um, and, and we're going to go ahead and dig into it, talk about the different things of strip till. Um, real quick, I want to throw a plug out there on something that we're doing here at our shop. Uh, December 10th, uh, we are having a strip till seminar here in our shop at Fenny Equipment, Coldwater, Ohio. We're going to have Joe Nestor in here talking. Uh, that'll be at 1030 a.m. Uh, we'll have lunch for everyone, but if you guys are in Ohio or Indiana, I highly encourage you to come over. We're going to have a strip till seminar. Get your hands on some of these products we're talking about and uh, be a really good seminar for everyone as we're planning in the 2020. Yeah, Joe's been doing that for quite a while. He's, he's definitely a very good speaker, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm excited. I am not familiar with Joe. I've never heard him speak. Well, I maybe have at a no-till conference, but... Uh, yeah, I'm excited to have him in here. I've heard a lot of good things and, and we're excited for everyone that's coming. Yep. So, a lot of these pictures were supplied by the other manufacturing folks. Um, basically, this right here is our end goal. This is what we're looking for right here. Residue moved out of the way into the center. There is likely been fertilizer placed underneath here and we've got growing crop right where it needs to be. And in the, the black soil is going to warm up quicker. It's going to dry out faster. And that, that right there is what we're looking for come early June, right, Jeff? That's exactly right. I mean, you know, talk about picket fence stands and things of that nature. I mean, you go down through there and very even emergence. And, and yeah, it's, it's exactly what we're after for sure. Correct. And, you know, this planter right here that planted through that did not have to plant through a whole lot of trash or junk. You know, it was clean seed bed, which then leads to that clean emergence, like you talked. Uh, in, a, in order to get yield, you've got to have ears, and they are uh, they are made by having more emerged plants per acre. And, and you can see there. Yeah. If you look at that picture, just like you said, Adam. I mean, what benefit would we get by having the drug strip in the middle. I mean, what is our benefit by total tilling? And you see the middle there is basically, I mean, why invest anything there? I mean, dollars and cents or, or even yeah. a tillage tool, invest it right where it gives us the biggest return. And that's right at the seed bed. Yep. Yep. That's a, that's a good picture. I want to put that up front to show everyone that that is our goal. That's what we're shooting for. And as we talk through these things, we're going to relay back to that picture quite a bit on how these yep. tools work. Um, 
So, you know, we talked about early on getting cover crops in between the strips. If you guys are planting cover crops, that's great. Um, that's part of the whole, whole idea and the whole ball game, but still being able to strip into there. I've got a ton of guys that are, that are doing these bio strips or, you know, stripping into green and it's, yep. it's worked out phenomenal. And I think, uh, of course, cover crops are something that's here to stay. There's no hiding that. Um, right. But incorporating them with strip tillage, and I'll show you a couple of really unique setups here in a little bit that do a great job of incorporating strip tillage and cover crops. Um, but those are some really good slides of some end results there as well. So as we talked earlier, Jeff, we said that there are many different types of strip till. Um, you know, the first one is the most obvious, and that is actually practicing uh, deep tillage to create a tilled strip to plant into next spring. So that would be your Yetter Maverick, correct? Right. Now, that's a, a term that everybody, you know, when we say deep tillage, you know, of course, immediately some guys think, oh, I need to be 12 to 14 inches. That's called ripping. That's not strip tilling. And that's where some guys have, you know, take that, think the deep rip and then plant over it. But right. it's, it's not the same scenario. I mean, that that 14 or 12 inch deep, you know, slot there that all that soil settles. And a lot of time we we end up with a, you know, a valley, not somewhat of a mound. Yeah. So, you know, when we say deep tillage, we're really six, seven inches. That's, that's our deep. Yep. So that's, you know, that's the most common. Well, I shouldn't say the most common. That's the most known about or heard about strip practice of strip tillage is, you know, um, you're creating a mound, really stirring the dirt in a strip in the fall. The next right. one is the one that I'm seeing the most uptick in recently here, if any equipment, and that is banding nutrients while creating somewhat of a strip. You may or may not be creating a strip. That would be with your low disturbance 10,000 magnum. Correct. That's right. And still, still getting across, making, you know, getting our nutrients in the soil profile, not broadcasting but still getting it in the soil, but then leaving the top, you know, not to where we've made a big strip there for highly erodible guys to where you can get some marshes that way in the fall. Correct, yep. We have built a lot of toolbars in the last two years that focus on that number two, uh, using Salford air carts to band dry fertilizer uh, two to six inches deep in the fall, creating those perfect blends maybe putting a row cleaner on there, which I'll show you here in a little bit, to move the residue to create that black strip that warms up and airs out faster and creates the picket fence stands without going super deep. Maybe you've got highly erodible ground. That number two right there is what you need to be looking at. And we'll show you some examples. And then number three is just creating a strip, moving the residue, but just lightly working the top one third or one to three inches of soil, maybe the strip freshener or the Maverick with the blades on it instead of the mole knife. Right. Yep. Um, Correct. I don't see a ton of that one in the fall, more maybe in the spring, but that is definitely a, a solid, it's low horsepower, uh, a solid way to build strips uh, without having to, to go real deep. And I think that's a, you know, a lot of guys are looking at, you know, do I do it in the fall? What if I don't get it done in the fall? You know, these are questions I hear all the time. Correct. You know, can I get it down in the spring? And, and yeah, I mean, there's several different methods as you're going to show here, but several different methods, whether fall or spring, we can still create that strip and get nutrient in the soil profile. Yep. Okay. So this picture right here, Jeff and I both agree, this, this is one of the most powerful pictures of the entire webinar, and that's because it shows the different faces of strip tillage right here, or what we would consider versions of strip tillage. Over here on the left, um, we have got right here, if you can see that, that is the Eddard Magnum strip that was just made. Um, that is a low disturbance opener. So what we did there is we banded dry fertilizer uh, four to six inches deep, and we didn't have the row cleaners on the front. You can put row cleaners on it, you can see right here. 
we did not have them in that past, but we just banded fertilizer. That's the one I've made a lot of toolbars on lately, uh, is banding that. The other one is the number, it is the same version, but adding these row cleaners. This band right here, you can see those row cleaners move the strip, move the residue, created that black layer that we talked about and banded fertilizer. Right here, we have got the Enter Maverick. The Enter Maverick is the most popular strip tillage unit that we're talking about today. Highly versatile, extremely uh, adjustable. And that's what you're seeing right here. You've got the mound, you've got pretty fine pieces of dirt that were broken up by the rolling basket. We used the whole knife, so we're going six, eight inches deep here to really fracture. And that's gonna plant beautifully in the spring. Yep. Over here, the last one is the strip freshener. Um, as you can see, uh, we didn't go nearly as deep. That strip freshener, which we're gonna save for a totally different webinar because that's a whole different other topic. But real quick to touch on that, Jeff, that thing is mainly just designed to do uh, shallow tillage, freshen strips that were made in the fall, or what's more popular potentially, creating its own spring strip. Yeah, high speed. I mean, it's a, it's a fat, you know, a lot of guys want to build a, you know, 24 row bar and, and I encourage guys, I mean, we don't have to get so wide with a freshener type bar because of the speed of going to that 10 mile an hour Correct. and, and reviving those strips if they've already been made, or like you said, just going out in a bean stubble and dropping the freshener, but, uh, um, yep. Yep. We, we've had a lot of success with the shirt fresher in the spring. That thing is amazing what it can do. Most of my customers are building one that is half as, half as many rows as their planner because they can drive it twice as fast. You right. can typically, exactly. typically get out there quite a bit sooner when it's maybe just a, a, tip, a tick questionable. You won't do any damage with that shirt fresher. Remove the residue and air it out. It does a phenomenal job. That strip will be ready to plant you know, 24 hours after we're on that thing over it. But right. this is a really good slide, Jeff, that I wanted to hit on with these guys to show the differences. The yep. other Magnum, the other Magnum with the row cleaner, the Maverick strip fresher. That, that's what you can look for out of each one of those units. And, and it, each one is, it has a, its own different face of strip tillage. Right, yeah. And I you know, if you look at the 10,000 Magnum there that's cleared and, you know, the row cleaners have cleared it, but you look yeah. at that uh, tandem wheel, that firming wheel at the back, how it yes. kind of firms that down. Uh, I'll tell you, really like that when highly erodible ground because we're not leaving it, you know, so many air pockets in there. Um, you know, and we have had a lot of growers remark on that, that they like how that firms it down to help keep that soil intact. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of uh, tools in the toolbox right here in this picture. <laughs> That's right. And, and as you well know, I mean, soil types, soil moisture, I mean, where you're located in, in geographically, that, that's where it can make a difference. And that's why you guys, I mean, obviously have rental bars, yep. you know, you guys do a fabulous job of getting these tools even a four row to a guy, take it out there. Hey, tr give this a try. He can see it on his own farm and, and decide which, which system he kind of wants. Correct. Yep. Yep. We, uh, here at Finney Equipment, we do a lot of rental, uh, or rental and demo of these bars. I've got four row bars, six, eight of every one of these units that's shown in this picture. And, uh, I, I've trucked those things pretty far to get guys to be on their farm <laughs> and let them see what they do. So I'd right. be happy to do that with anyone. So let's go on. Um, so tonight's focus, uh, what we want to really get to you guys tonight is show you some different fall strip till setups and options, uh, the placement of fertilizer and how to do that, the types of strip till, which we have really talked quite a bit about already, different toolbar options, we'll briefly touch on that, and then different dry box options. Um, for doing your fertilizer. That is what we want to talk about tonight, and we'll move on and, and do so. So the Enter Maverick, Jeff, uh, it, it's actually an older strip till. I mean, it was originated 
quite a few years ago and it's been changed several times, but that, what, what's the difference here in these two pictures? Difference is this is showing here, Adam, where, you know, we've got the mole knife on the left, you know, yeah. if we're going to do that extra little bit of tillage and, and get down there, you know, four to six inches deep or even place some nutrient yeah. um, where the picture on the right is showing where we take that knife out of the equation. And let's say, let's say we ran our left side and did some strips and we're like, man, I just want to go out there and just tiptoe over the top. You know, I don't want a knife. I don't want you can take the knife off and we've got the vertical tillage attachments which there's two blades in there and basically we're basically converting that ma maverick to a strip freshener if you will yeah um, to where we can kick up our speed and the horsepower requirement isn't quite as much and but we're rejuvenating you might say those strips and, and getting that seed bed you know march april the earlier dates there it you know, makes a big difference. Correct. Yeah. So early on, we talked about a light duty strip freshener without having to go so deep. And uh, that would be that one on the right with these VT blades. So really good option to, you can still yeah. ban fertilizer with that one as well, but uh, lower right. horsepower uh, option there on the other Maverick, very versatile strip till unit. Yep. And of course, the one on the left with the rock, with the knife, we do have that rock trip option. Yes. You know, so if we do get into rockier areas, that is a rock trip that'll, you know, uh, trip that out of the way to where, you know, we're, we're not in a shear bolt type scenario. Correct. Yep. Now, I've seen that thing work many times and it, it's phenomenal. It always amazes customers and, and they're happy when it trips. That way they're yep. not out wrenching. That's right. So what the Maverick does is what you can see in these pictures. Um, it moves residue with the road cleaners up front, it mixes the soil, it does your deep tillage if you want it to, and then finishes it off with a rolling basket. So you can really build the mound, you can control the height of the mound, you can control the down pressure on the rolling basket, you can control the depth of the road cleaners. All of that stuff is fully adjustable to get that thing to dance in your soil. It, you can make that thing do whatever you want. Um, yeah, the adjustments are endless, really. Uh, you know, with the sealers and, and the mound building, the row cleaners, I mean, it's just everything is adjustable, really, to fine tune it just the way you want it. Yeah. Yeah. So the other Maverick, uh, it, we just went over that, but it can place liquid dryer and hydrous, extremely adjustable, has the rock trip option, rolling basket option, and has got several successful customers. This, this is one that's tried and true and has been changed and modified several times over the years, and today is an extremely solid option. Uh, I want to show you three different Maverick setups here, Jeff. Uh, these are ones that we set up here at Fenny Equipment uh, with your assistance and uh, all these guys are extremely happy out doing uh, fall strips. And of course, they're all placing dry fertilizer. Jeff, are most of your guys placing dry fertilizer with these Mavericks? I think, yeah, that's a natural progression. I mean, when we had guys starting with strip till, you know, guys kind of just wanted to see what the strip did. Yeah. And of course, <clears throat> when they see, you know, the like the picture of that corn coming up, once they see that, yeah. and it's like, well, it's kind of a slam dunk. I mean, let's add some nutrient to this. I mean, let's let's really energize this row. I mean, yeah. put the fertilizer down <clears throat> to it, put it down there. We've got our strip made. And I mean, it, it's it's ready. I mean, it's ready to go. Yeah. I agree. Um, most of my guys, that you know, like you just said, progression over time. We'll start off with the toolbar and a year or two later, they'll, they'll add the cart. But it's a really good option to do that all in one pass in the fall. It just makes a lot of sense. It is, yep. Okay, so we'll move on to the other magnum, the most versatile opener on the market can apply dry liquid or anhydrous. Uh, this thing is a single disc opener on, a, on an angle, a 22 inch blade. Um, we might as well just show you pictures of it here. So this is a 60 foot bar that was here in Ohio 
banding uh, dry fertilizer. And the, the deal here was high, several things. Highly erodible soil, doesn't look like it in the picture, but he does. Um, <laughs> wanted to band, it is a no-tiller, wanted to band dry fertilizer without the erosion, without the heavy tillage, and the other magnum is what stepped up to the plate and did it. And uh, I'll show you a quick video here of this thing running, applying dry fertilizer. <clears throat> Jeff, you can hardly even tell where that thing ran. Thank, thank the Lord, Very, had some GPS there. That's right. Very hard press. And this has been the history of the magnum, you know, that we've had throughout the years. It's a high speed, minimal soil disturbance, but accurate for depth placement of nutrients. Yeah, uh, you put all that together in a package, and you're seeing just exactly that right there in that bean stubble. Yeah, and I'm here to tell you, it, it rained a half inch or so a couple of days after this. And you drive by the field, and you wouldn't even you yeah. weren't even sure if you'd done that field or not. It was <laughs> That's uh, right. It's pretty amazing how low disturbance those things can be. But uh, you know, then of course here's the Yetter Magnum doing anhydrous <laughs> as well. So it's a very versatile opener. But it does a, a phenomenal job uh, placing dry. You can see right there, um, you know, three to five inches deep in a low disturbance fashion. That's what I, you know, I sit and look at what's on the market. And I mean, what opener really is on the market that you can go from anhydrous to dry to liquid and all but just changing the tube? Correct. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. the, the cost, upfront cost, yes, for the whole unit. But after that, any of your nutrient placement items, they're there. I mean, yeah. just by pulling tubes, put a liquid tube, put an anhydrous tube, put a dry tube on, and you're ready to go. So, you know, in this day and age, I mean, right now, propane is, we know what propane's a shortage. It's not really a shortage, but we could have the same with our nutrients at some point. We could get into different scenarios and supplies and you know, logistics of getting it. So with this Magnum, you've also opened the door to where, hey, whatever happens, I, I'm very versatile. I can go a lot of different directions with this one opener. Correct. Yep. And we've seen that over the years with the Magnum. We've sold a lot of them. Uh, and when Jeff is talking about that one too, right here is the dry tube. I don't have a great picture right now of the anhydrous or liquid, but it's very similar. Just obviously smaller. It's a three-eighths or half-inch tube. Um, but what I'm showing here in this picture is mainly this right here. Yet are developed. You know, over time, guys were saying, well, I like that magnum, but I want row cleaners to create that black layer that we talked about that the heat gets to in the spring. And so they, they designed it to where now you can put a row cleaner out front. So this would be that number two in the list of the bases of strip till for moving the residue and banding dry fertilizer. This is the one that I'm really seeing a lot of guys look into. Uh, wouldn't you say so, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just because of its versatility, like you say, Adam. I mean, it's just so versatile to spring, to side dress, to fall. I mean, it just has all the things to it, really. Yeah. Yeah, very slick uh, way of doing it. Here's another good picture of Jeff Semelber. He's got the precision clean sweep on the front of his getter magnums there. Uh, this is on 20 inch. So this guy is actually uh, building a strip with the row cleaners and coming through and putting down anhydrous. Um, so again, prepping for spring, making the strips, making that black layer that we talked about. This here is another uh, getter magnum. 30 inch three point yetter toolbar uh, used to blow down dry fertilizer that we worked on and set up here um, this fall for a guy. Uh, again, extremely versatile unit. So we get into some, some different setups. I just wanna, I got a bunch of pictures to show everyone on, on the different setups um, of these. Jeff, what do you say that most of these guys that are pulling the yetter Mavericks, what's the horsepower requirement on those? That can vary, you know, with the Maverick and the Mole Knife, you know, anywhere from 25 to 30 horse per opener. Yeah. I mean, you could get up to 35 horse, and, and then that's going to depend on if you're pulling dry or anhydrous or, you know, right. soil types, if you've got a lot of hills and, you know, different variations, yeah. you know, but 
Yeah, 25 to 35 is pretty good area, basically. Yeah, most of my guys are pulling a six or a 12. Uh, we don't really see much more than that on the Jetter Maverick. I mean, don't get me wrong, yeah. there's some out there, but this is a pretty common setup. You know, a right. South for drag fertilizer tank with the, the Jetter Maverick out the back. So here real quick, we're going to get into a few popular fertilizer or uh, toolbar options that we see for the, the strip tilling. And that number one is the Yetter 3.0. It's available in 30 and 40 foot models. Um, this is obviously our most popular. Yetter makes a heck of a toolbar. Uh, and then the True Ag or the Case IH. I'll show you some pictures here in a little bit of the True Ag. But this is basically just a field cultivator type toolbar. And then you've got the front pull toolbar, like a John Deere 1770, which I'll show you some pictures of if I can here. Here's the Yetter, your standard three-point uh, toolbar. It's got some anhydrous magnums hanging on it. That's just a solid, uh, perfect way to go for strip zone. Right here would be the true ag style or the field cultivator style uh, toolbar. It's got Yetter magnums. You can hang the strip pressure. You can hang the the HR plus Mavericks on there as well. Um, but just showing you the different toolbars. Here's a pretty exciting picture, Jeff, that I, that is, uh, if you want to talk progressive and, and, and thanks for the future, you know, and talk yeah. cover crops. This guy over here in Indiana, there, there's about 10 different ways you can utilize this toolbar. You could use it in the fall to actually blow down dry creating these strips with this strip freshener. But what he's doing is he's actually using these strip freshener to create a strip and band and incorporate cover crops with this Valmar box. And so he's planting his cover crops in a strip. In the spring, he will come back and plant in between these strips. Do you see many guys doing that? Starting to see more and more. I, I think that setup is really incorporating cover crops into this whole thing i think that is <clears throat> definitely the the way to go i mean yeah. it is slick the way it works the cover crop comes up beautifully and moving over in between our cover crops and, and then concentrating there as far as preparing our seed bed for you know next year's planting it's yeah. it is very it works very good that's the next step is is where cover crops fit into this whole thing i mean uh, profits up north just there in, in Van Wert County. They've got, uh, we put a Valmar box on their big strip so rig. Jason Malk, you've seen him on Twitter posting about his Valmar that he had. Uh, yep. You know, the, the cover crops and the wheat and whatever you're looking to band, it, it all fits into this whole strip game. It, it's right. got an effect. Their solar panels, as Jason would say, but uh, <laughs> it's. That's right. It's the next interesting step, and I'm excited about it. Of course, uh, no one's quite the expert on it yet. It's a learning game, but I'm excited for what's coming for that. That's right, and that's why I can't stress enough for growers that are listening to this is to get with you guys. I mean, the Finning Equipment Group, they've already stubbed their toe on different things. They've already made a mistake here and there. You know, why not work with these guys that, you know, know what's going on? And that's what I, I just hats off to Finning Equipment for, you know, the rental bars that you guys offer and your knowledge. It's just, it's unreal what you guys are bringing to the end user. That's for sure. Well, we try. I mean, you, you can't sell it if you don't have it and, and if you don't let the farmers try it. So right. we, we try to, you know, with the help from the guys at Yetter, we try to get all this iron out on the ground. Get it to your farm so you guys can play with it, see how it works for you, and we'll fine tune those toolbars and those those little uh, details to get them tailored to you. So now we're going to talk about quickly uh, the dry box that works best for everyone. Of course, we offer the Salford dry boxes, the ST6, the ST10 models. They basically trail behind the toolbar. Uh, I am in favor of the. Uh, to the toolbar being right behind the tractor and then the dry box being behind the toolbar. So um, that's visibility. We, that's that's really for visibility. That's yeah. 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 Visibility and how that thing trails. 
uh, it, it makes a huge difference. Uh, yep. So that that's definitely the way that we found that works very successfully. So here are some uh, pictures of uh, some more ST carts. Uh, so this one on the left is actually a three bin. We've got a 70-30 split here and then a, a valve on our out the front for some micronutrients to place uh, in the strip as well. And then of course these two are ST series as well. Uh, this was just the other day up in uh, Hardin County. Uh, I was Nick wondering if you were going to show. Yeah, I was wondering if you were going to show this. That's a good story of Nick. I mean, he yep. prevent plant acres, and his cover crop was six foot tall. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. Nick yeah. Heights up there. He had that prevent plant, and uh, that, yeah, you're right, Jeff. He just he was fretting. He's talked to me several times. Talked to your dad several times. I mean, what am I going to do? What? And so what Gary says, hey, I'll just bring you out a bar. I'll bring you out a strip to a bar, and we'll just show you how this thing works. So yeah. if you guys rolled that cover crop down, I think you used a rolling basket or something. Correct. Yeah. Made, you know, rolled it down, and he started to make these strips. And I mean, it was just like, you know, the, the pressure, the, the stress was relieved off of him because he could definitely see, now this is what I'm after. Yeah. Yeah, and he had that kind of success feeling, and and uh, came by just testing testing the waters and seeing what the heck would work for him. And I, I think we've we've dialed in the strip till bar, and it's yeah, so far we're excited for what we're seeing up there. Yep. Um, real quick, I'll show a quick video here of another ST10 uh, Salford Pathfinder cart on this toolbar. Uh, again, that's a 70-30 split on a 10-ton tank, so. There's a, many ways to skin the cat of putting on some dry fertilizer and Salford certainly uh, does a good job of that. So again, that's a, that's a three bin deal there that we did for a customer. Um, that's a, another Yetter Magnum. And uh, that's the end of the slide. But real quick here, guys, I want to show you this picture on the right. That is what the strip freshener can do for you. That was uh, a spring strip made with the high speed strip pressure. Shallow tillage, high speed, and I tell you what, those things are beautiful to plant behind. Garden variety strips. <laughs> that's right. That is I mean, right. that's, that's what it comes down to. I mean, we are placing a garden variety area there that our planter row unit, I mean, it just, it, it's beautiful how we can do all the things that the planter needs to do accurately. Yep. And, um, give it a good environment to get into yeah um so do you think uh what do you think are some of the biggest challenges for guys that are that are facing trip till today i think weather is i mean that's weather, that's yeah. right up there the top thing you know guys and secondly it's it's committing to the system you yeah. know i see so many guys who will jump in and try strip till and it's like, oh, it's just this and that. And they just, you know, they don't understand to know that when, if you're going to do fall strip till, hey, when the combine's going, when it's done, you need to be following up with strip till. Correct. I mean, it, there's no, well, let's get this, let's get our beans done or let's get our corns done and then we'll come back. No. If you're committed to strip till, it's, you've got the tractor ready to go as soon as the combine and maybe the combine's not even out of the field yet. Yeah, but you need to be focused on making those strips. Yeah, they're dang near hooked together in the fall of the combine and the strip. Till. Exactly, <laughs> and that's I mean, that's where guys have to have that understanding that if this system, and that's what really comes down to, it's a system that uh, it's a change of way of farming, <laughs> a yeah. change of way of thinking as well. Yeah. You know that that we're going to actually make next year's seed bed and we're, we're going to do the best job we can to do it. So I also think it's maybe one of the most efficient ways of doing everything though, too. I mean, if you really want to hone everything down, there's no more accurate, efficient way of doing it than strip till. I don't think so. And with GPS and all the technology we have guidance and everything, it's easier today than ever before. That is true. I mean, yeah. way easier. I mean, yeah, I, I think another, uh, some more pain points that guys are having in strip till is number one, confusion. 
I mean, how many shirt fill units are there in the market? Oh, um, yeah. Not only that, but just knowing kind of where to start and how, you know, how big of a toolbar can I do? Because there's not, not everyone does demos. <laughs> that's right. You know, and that's, that's a big thing. And that, that's where you help out with your systems is that you have them available for guys to try. Correct. And once they see just, you know, just like Nick did, I mean, he was skeptical until that, thing went through his field and he was just like i can't believe it i just yep. can't believe that this is what i have and ready to plan into for next year yeah yeah it's it's pretty awesome to have all that stuff done in the fall looking forward to the next spring and, and knowing that that weight is lifted off your shoulders some fertilizers place that's going to stay there and right. subsoil uh, subsurface application um you know you're following the four r's and you're ready to roll. So, but yeah. that, that's the end of the webinar, guys. Um, what else do you got, Jeff? That's pretty much it, Adam. You went through everything as far as I know. Um, I do know um, Bex Hybrids is, is doing quite a bit extensive testing on uh, strip tillage and strip fresheners. That is correct. Um, I think they've got three or four, four row strip till bars with a, a dry box to blow some fertilizer. So, you know, I'm really excited to look forward to seeing what some of their tests are going to show because I think, you know, they're going to do timing, you know, as far as fall versus spring and some different scenarios. So, you know, hey, we're still learning and we're still getting that, trying to find that silver bullet that, hey, this is the system that's, that's really going to work the best in this timing. So it's, it's exciting. The strip tills definitely has a, a big future, I feel anyway. And, and, you know, as far as controlling our traffic and investing where our return is and, our, you know, right at the seed bed is where we're investing and that's where our return is going to come. Correct. And, you know, you mentioned the Bex deal. Uh, I think I'm heading down there Wednesday actually to help them get those dry boxes fired up. I wondered about that. I wondered, I know they have everything and I didn't, I knew they had a few of the boxes, but uh, yeah. yeah, that'd be so, good. Yep, Wednesday we're supposed to get those things fired up. But we're going to end on this slide, guys. Again, this was our ultimate goal at the beginning, and this is our ultimate goal at the end. And everything that we talked about kind of leads us back to this picture of the picket fence stands, the clean seed bed, and fertilizer placed below the plant. So that's what we've got for you guys today. Uh, this is the first of many webinars with Jeff and I. Um, you know, we, we've got a lot of things to talk about in the next few months, Jeff. That's exactly right. I'm ready, Adam. I'm pumped. I'm ready. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, well, we're going to let everyone get back to Monday night football, and uh, we'll get off of here, and we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. <clears throat> Thank you.